what I've seen from tens of thousands of people is that if either they have too many ideas or no ideas, it's an excuse from starting because they're afraid of failing. And so that's why in the book, we have little challenges that are fun. And I've seen the results like this guy, Pat, he was doing customer support in Poland. <laughs> I don't know, making 24,000 a year. And he's always been excited about YouTube. And so he started, he followed the process and he was able to get customers to do YouTube consultancy, like editing and thumbnails and stuff like that. And he quit his day job two weeks ago. He's making 24,000 a month in revenue now. Wow. And because he started, right? And so when people have these excuses, there's no ideas, there's too many, it's just an excuse from getting going. The thing that I would I would say is almost no ideas are, are unique. I, I, I like the funny example of, it's like someone starting a restaurant and then everyone else being like, well, there's that one restaurant in Orlando. Guess we're not gonna, no more restaurants here. And you're like, well, of course there's more restaurants. And that's exactly it. There's different flavors, different types, different styles, different frequencies that you can then create. And there's also pretty large markets. Like I had a friend uh, who read Million Dollar Weekend and he had an idea for baby clothing that grew with the baby. Great idea. Whoa. Pretty cool idea, right? You know, and, and Sign let me, me up. Do you guys have, you have kids? Uh, four and seven, yeah. And it, you know, we're gonna be going skiing and my wife's like, well, we gotta buy boots, we gotta buy a jacket. I'm like, they're gonna use it for three days. So let's even take these as examples. So I generally don't think there's million dollar ideas necessarily. I think that's overvaluing the idea. I think there's million dollar opportunities and then million dollar execution. Right, so making sure that there's at least a million dollars that you can make in it, and then are you doing the execution, getting started? You know, that's why the book has a snap on it, getting going to then find out if that's true, and then being able to then scale it at a later point. Now, this person that that rid million dollar weekend, you know, normally I'd say what people do is like, oh, I got this idea for. Let's even take your example too, like rental clothes for skiing for kids. The traditional approach is, all right, well now I've got to build a Shopify. And I've got to get a landing page. I've got to run some ads. I'm probably going to talk to a bunch of my buddies. And I was like, you know, you could find out in like an hour whether that's a real, that's a business. And there, you could you got to check the market size. You got to check the business model a little bit. And all, all of it's very quick and without a lot of without any money being spent. And then there's different ways you can validate if people are excited to give you money for it. And this previous person who had the idea for baby clothes that grew, every he he messages me a day later. He was like, I googled it and somebody already did it. I'm not going to do it. I was like, oh, mm. okay. Okay. And so that is a way of letting the fear stop him from where he wants to actually be. And he's much closer to where he wants to be than he realizes. But he's got to take a little bit of courage, which we all have, and then do a little validation and find out like, oh, wow, I can actually sell this myself. And maybe for him, he's in the service. He's in the Air Force. Maybe you have Air Force related. Maybe yours is just for service people, just like USAA, right? Like you can only get it if you're in the service. So again coming back on it, I wouldn't let the idea or lack of ideas, because there's many ideas out there and I have a lot and how to do it in the book as well, stop you from practicing, right? You know, in a lot of our life, we put so much, it has to be all or nothing. Like if this idea doesn't work, I'm nothing. It's like, no, if it doesn't work, you tried and then you just try again and then again and again and again until eventually you get your one hit. Like I, I always joke, Zuckerberg has not done anything good since 2005, Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook. <laughs> Like name one thing he's come up with that has actually done well. Metaverse, total flop, portal, total flop. Everything he's done has been acquisition. WhatsApp, Oculus, Instagram. Guy's got nothing in 20 years. And so my point though for everyone out there is that, yeah, we think of him as super smart, but he had one, he got lucky once and he didn't even get lucky. He copied Winklevoss's and he copied it in a weekend. And so the the point there is like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I can do it too. And that that's what I want the book to do, be for people is believing and then getting started that they can do it too, whether they have a genius idea right now or not. But sitting on the sidelines or putting your toe in the, in the, in the pool, you're never gonna learn to swim. One of the ideas that you have in the book is try something for a hundred times, do something a hundred times yes. and see where that takes you. When I was just getting started, I tried all sorts of different ideas. Like you're talking about failures. I'm gonna write and illustrate children's books. Love it. I'm going to open up a mattress shop. I'm going to become a CPA. I was all these different ideas, right? Great. And I'm cringe, a little bit cringe. I'm listening, but I'm listening to all these podcasts every day. I'm like, I love podcasts. These are great. I'm learning a lot. I'm just going to do podcasting for a year. Five years later, I have my own six figure agency, which has completely changed my life. Right? So which, which by the way, you can get all these different tools, breakdowns at million dollar And cause again, this is not it's not a fiction book. This is kind of like a how-to. It's a model. It's it's life-changing stuff. I'm not just saying that, Noah. 
No, no, I, I, I used to not. If you would have said this to me two years ago, I would have been very self-conscious and been like, yeah, you know, there's these other people out there. I'm like, I've literally done it seven plus times. I've worked for the literally, you know, billionaires. One of them only got lucky once, but he's still exceptionally gifted. I help build mint.com. Like I've done it enough times and over and over again, and I'm still in the trenches operating where I'm like, if there's someone else better, I wouldn't have not written this book and I would have just read theirs, but there's not. And uh, I think there's there's definitely some really you know good people out there, but I feel very excited to share this. The other, the other comment I was going to make, these ideas that you had uh, are all great. You know, and uh, the point is to try these ideas and some of them will work, some of them won't. And what I've noticed is with the law of 100 is how do we not quit too soon? Because we all have. Everyone in life has that thing. Like, if I would have stuck with uh, guitar, if I would have stuck with playing tennis, like, where would I be today? And so instead of quitting too soon, do at least 100 times. We call it Law of 100. And that's been transformational. I've seen this guy, Trent Dressel. He's a 25-year-old kid out of Chicago. And he dreamed to be a content creator. But his day job was in sales. And so he did all these YouTube videos about everybody else. And I was like, Trent, what's your unique story? He's like, well, I'm a junior sales guy. I was like, guess what? I can't copy you. I can't be that. And you can't be Noah, but you can be Trent doing junior sales content. And he stuck with it for at least 100 videos. He's got over 50,000 subscribers monetizing his videos. Uh, not, I'm not clear exactly the revenue he's making, but that is the path to then lead him to where maybe A, he can start his own consultancy, he can start his own agency or content creation uh, and a lot of different avenues. But he got started and he stuck with it. And that's the same thing I'm seeing with these billionaires I interviewed. They're not that much different than us. I think we think they are. They're not. But they picked a billion dollar opportunity, which we can talk about. They started it and they stuck with it. 